So in today's video, we're going to be covering a new flight controller. Now, this is not your ordinary 20 by 20 flight controller because it packs so many features that I think it's the first in the market to do such thing. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a closer look here. You see this IC right here? This allows us to install two cameras so we can switch between two cameras. That's one thing. It can also run dual gyros. However, not sensor fusion. You can choose whether between the ICM or the MPU 6000. I got the one with just the MPU 6000, but you can get them with both, but it comes with a really big fat ICM gyro up here, which you don't really need anyway. So it does come with dual gyros if you wanted, you could choose between both of them. And the best part of all is it has a nine volt regulator. It has both a five and a nine volt regulator for your video transmitter. That is insane here. So let's get started. All right, guys, so this is the Flywoo Goku 20 by 20 F7 flight controller. So it's, it is an F7 microcontroller unit. So it is the fastest that's currently compatible with Betaflight. And if we flip over, we see that we have two regulators. We have our OSD. We even have memory. We have a barometer. We have the MPU 6000 right here using tantalum capacitor for the OSD chip. Really nice, really good, something you want to see here. And again, 9 volt regulator. And the best part of all is the price. The price is totally doable. It's under 40 bucks, which is something really great that packs this amount of features. So let's see how we would set this guy up. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with our video transmitter. And again, check this out. They even have this laid out perfectly. So our video transmitter is going to be connected up in this area. We have the ground, which is going to be the black wire, nine volts, which is amazing. This will give you a higher probability of having absolutely clean video feed, even if your quadcopter is noisy. However, I still recommend you add the low ESR capacitor. And again, everything will be linked down below. Now, over here, we have the video output. So that would be the yellow line going to your video transmitter. And right here, we have TX5, which is going to be for smart audio or any other protocol that allow you to control the video transmitter through the on-screen display. Here is where it gets interesting. So this has a lot of features when you really think about it. Since it has a 9 volt, that means you'll be able to install the DJI FPV system also on this, powering it up from this guy, which is insane. And not only that, you'll be able to connect two cameras. So let's take a closer look. So the area would be right here. So we have the ground, which would be the black wire. Now, if you are connecting two cameras, what you'd want to do is take both of the ground wires, wrap them together and install them right here. And the same thing goes for the 5 volt, which would be right here. I would wrap both of the wires together, put them here. Now for camera one, I would grab the first yellow wire and install it on C1, which means camera one. And on camera two, I'd grab this yellow wire and I'd install it here on C2. And this right here will allow you to control the on-screen display of the camera. Again, pretty insane stuff that's on this board here. And you still have a bunch of UARTs still available, which is something, um, Pretty unique, I might say. The first record that was ever broken was by Maytech, but now uh, this is the, the, the official latest, most feature-packed, proper 20 by 20 flight controller, in my opinion. And um, I don't think anybody would disagree currently because, so now let's go into, let's just say connecting our receiver. So here we have a dedicated RSSI pad. So if you had a dedicated RSSI output from your receiver, that's where you'd wanna put it. But usually when you're running SBUS, it's usually just broadcasting it in one of the channels. So you don't really have to worry about that. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna install our ground. This would be our black wire for our receiver. We have five volt here. And if you're running SBUS, IBUS, or Spectrum, you'd want to install it right here, the, your signal for that. Uh, because this is an F7, it'll take anything. So that's where you want to put it, and that's RX1 right here. Now, if you're running Spectrum, and again, it's 3.3 volts, so you would get the ground, 3.3, and you'd put your Spectrum signal here. IBUS and SBUS is going to be exactly identical, ground, 5 volt, and then your signal here. Very simple, very nice. Everything is really close to each other. So the next three pads down we have would be TX2, RX2, and then we have TX3, RX3, and then we have uh, TX4 and RX4. So we still have more UARTs available for us, which is still pretty cool. And we also have IC squared or I2C protocol pads here for some sort of sensors or a compass or something if you wanted to install something of that nature. I don't know how compatible it is with iNav currently, but there might be a release for this because it even does have a barometer on board, which is really nice. And here we have five volt in ground. 
So now for the ESC part, it's going to be installed in this connector and it's actually not broken out to these. These are actually more pads for you to connect more things out of here. So that's pretty insane. However, I would have personally liked it more if we were able to have the connector basically broken out into the pads, but that's not the case here. And what we have here instead is we have a ground, we have another five volt, and then we have our LED signal next to it. So if you wanted to install an LED ground, which is a black wire, and then five volt red wire and then the signal for the led to change the colors would be the third one right here and then after that we have the buzzer signal out which would be the buzzer negative basically so if you wanted to install a buzzer you'd take the negative part of the buzzer install it here and then go all the way to the five volt and install the other side so that's how you'd connect a buzzer to this and then after the buzzer what we have which is this pad right here it's going to be the current sensor. So your ESC has a current sensor. You could run it directly to here. And then we also have another motor five and six output, which are these two right here, which can be remapped to do anything else that you would like. Now, um, it doesn't have only all of this. It even has memory for a black box log. This is insane of the amount of things they're able to fit on this. And now, if you might want be wondering, how would you connect this to an already made four in one ESC? The first thing you need to figure out are the motors. So you need to figure out which one of these, let's just say, for example, you, you know, you, I wouldn't recommend you do this right away because this could be wrong. Uh, you can you can flip something, you could damage something. The first thing you'd want to do, for example, which a lot of people actually get lost on. So right now these are just straight wires. So let's say on the ESC we have motors one, two, three, four on the four, the first four pins from this side. And on this one, it was one, two, three, and four. It's on the right side. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to remove this if this was motor one from the ESC and from here and then install it to the correct place right there. So you want to match those up perfectly. So you want motor one, two, and three, and four to go accordingly correctly. And then you want to find VBAT or VCC and route it accordingly. So let's just say it's this one that's VCC. This is all theoretical right now. So on the ESC, this is the battery voltage because this will need battery voltage to supply the nine volt regulator. So we'll say the first pin from the ESC here is giving the battery voltage, but on the flight controller here, it's this pin here. So we would actually take that wire out and plug it in here. So it's kind of like a little puzzle and then you need to find the ground. Those are the most important five wires. Are they five? No, six wires. Those are the most important six. If you don't know what the others do, you don't have to connect them. Um, but the, those are the main ones to get anything working, which is motors one, two, three, four. And then we have battery voltage and ground. Those are the main six. And then the other ones are pretty simple. Usually current, it'll tell you which one's the current. Just connect them directly to each other. And the RX would go to another uh, RX pad. They, they usually they just connect it. That's for telemetry usually. And you could connect those. But the most important ones, you could cut the ones you don't know what the hell they're for. But again, the most important are those six motors, one, two, three, four, and then VCC or VBAT and ground. Those are the most important and you'll be good to go into that perspective. Now, if you don't know how to route these cables, it's very simple. You have these little plastic things right here. And what you want to do is you would actually just lift it up like this. And then you could pull the wire right out. Don't pull back too much. See, and then you're good to go. And you could just drop that back in. And um, yeah, it's good. And then you could, you know, put it anywhere else and you'll be good in that perspective. So this is how you'd actually change the wires here without having to resolder or, you know, cut these wires up and solder them into the correct way. So it's very simple in that perspective. And I'm actually really impressed with the amount of feature this thing packs for the price it's selling. I'm pretty sure they could have charged 60 bucks for this and a lot of people would still purchase it, including myself because of all these features. And um, well, Everything's linked down below, and that's concluded for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this, guys. And um, yeah, if anyone's used this, let us know down in the comment section as well. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.